So during this course, we're going to discuss and actually configure pricing in SD, sales and distribution. And we're going to be looking at one particular business function, cost plus, as I mentioned before. Um, and we're going to use that as a means of understanding some of the SD pricing functionality. Of course, um, SD pricing functionality is a very large topic, but um, we're going to drill into some specific functionality we'll use around cost plus pricing and go a little bit deeper, perhaps, than an overview course. Um, so what we also want to get out of this course is an, is an understanding of an approach. Um, so, you know, as opposed to, uh, you know, what you might learn in a classroom, we need to be able to learn how to uh, do and configure pricing on a project. So that's why I'm saying here we want to move from the theoretical to the practical, to, to getting practical, hands-on, and uh, uh, within a project context. Okay, so our, our topic here, again, is cost plus pricing. So what is cost plus pricing? Well, it's pretty much just like it sounds. It's a business scenario in which the price we charge to the customer is based upon the cost of the product plus a markup. So there's a cost, we add something to it, and that's the price. So cost plus, cost plus pricing. And we're going to be looking at this um, scenario, this particular scenario, as a way to improve and increase your hands-on configuration skills. Okay, so one of the first things we want to ask ourselves uh, as a fundamental question is, why do pricing? And we're asking that uh, from the perspective of the business. So why should the business do pricing? What is the business getting out of pricing in an SAP system as well as specifically cost plus pricing? Well, the first thing um, the business is going to get out of SAP pricing or really any automated type system is consistent and automated rules, right? So it's not, uh, these aren't, the price that's gonna be calculated for the customer is gonna be the same regardless of who's taking the order or where the uh, order's being taken, uh, regardless of what channel, whether it's over the phone with a customer service rep or it's on the web or it's via EDI. So if the business desires um, consistent pricing, the system can support that. So regardless of the channel or the people, uh, those rules for pricing can be automated. The second thing the business will get out of pricing in an SAP system is ease of maintenance, right? So um, we want to set up the system so that it doesn't take a lot of time to uh, set up the prices. And even more importantly, it doesn't take a lot of time to maintain the prices. So if we're in an environment where prices are changing, um, as they often do, uh, uh, we want to have the system so that it doesn't take a lot of time to update. So um, that's a key, key uh, criteria of why we would automate pricing in a system. And then third, um, flexibility. So if the business decides they want to price in a new way, have new rules around pricing, or change the existing ones in some manner, uh, it should, it should uh, the system should support that in a fairly easy manner, in a flexible manner, so that they don't have to write a lot of code and go through a whole big project just to change prices. So that's, that's um, something you should initially keep in mind, those kind of three major, um, major benefits to the business. And really, you always want to be asking yourself, what's the business getting out of this? Whatever we're doing on an SAP project, what's the, what's the business benefit? Because that's really, really uh, what should be driving the project. And that leads into the last point here. Uh, which someone once said, which I always have remembered, is that there's no such thing as an IT project, 
really any SAP project is a business project with a large IT component. So the reason we're doing these projects is for business benefit. It's not so that IT folks can build neat and interesting things. It's to support business value. So you always want to keep in mind what's the business value behind what we're trying to do. So let's now take a look specifically at cost plus pricing. So we, we talked about the general benefits of, of pricing and why a business might want to automate their pricing in an SAP system. But specifically for cost plus pricing, where is that useful? So um, it's especially handy for highly dynamic pricing envir environments where there are uh, lots of price changes, where there's lots of perhaps cost changes, um, where there are many, many products, and where perhaps there are some very unique products and services being offered. So if you think about the first one, frequent cost or price changes. So, you know, imagine a, um, a, uh, a company that sells some sort of a commodity. So let's say, um, well, in the old days, we used to say uh, computer memory chips, for example, where, where the, the cost of the particular pride item was changing, changing, you know, weekly, daily, et cetera. So if, if that's the environment and um, the company's having to maintain um, those price changes uh, every, every week, every day, across maybe thousands of SKUs, thousands of individual products, that can get pretty uh, laborious and uh, painful. So if you're using cost plus pricing and the, the cost is automatically getting updated, and we'll talk about how that happens a little later, but um, the, with the cost getting automatically updated, the price um, also gets automatically updated. So we're just adding a markup that stays consistent across um, a dynamically changing cost. So the price you know, for in terms of the maintenance is automatically getting updated without any user involvement. Um, also think of a scenario where a company offers uh, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of individual products. And, um, you know, that can be uh, painful to maintain individual prices for all of those, especially if um, those prices are customer specific, for example. So um, that might be a scenario where the business wants to set, um, have, a, have just a markup set upon uh, the cost of the product and uh, um, increase their ease of maintenance that way without having to maintain individual price records for every single product. They can just set um, a markup or a set of different markups and let the um, the price reflect that markup upon the cost. And then there are scenarios that are a little different where a company is building a complex product uh, or, uh, or a, a service. So in the case of a complex product, let's say, um, let's say uh, we're building a nuclear submarine, right? So there's a lot, that's a very specific individual product with lots of um, production costs and various other costs going into it. It's not like we're gonna have a list price for that, uh, as far as I know. So um, what we can do in the system is have all those various costs um, hit the sales order line item and um, that comes in as a cost that we can then mark up and use that for, for pricing. And then in the situation of services, think of a, a company, perhaps a, a construction company where we're, we're billing labor. There's all kinds of different labor rates. So we've got uh, boiler makers and millwrights and engineers and all sorts of various labor who are posting their costs to a uh, particular um, job that they're working on. So we can bring those through um, as the labor cost and mark that up accordingly. So um, leverage that cost plus pricing rather than a, than a flat rate. Um, so general point just being that cost plus pricing um, 
is highly beneficial for um, ease of maintenance. And I, I do think you'll find, though, that companies, typically they don't come to you asking whether they want to, whether they should price a particular item cost plus or not. Usually they, are, they just tell you. They already have an idea of what, what products or what type of uh, offerings they have that, that are, would be uh, priced using cost plus versus um, a set type of price.